For protection today and progress tomorrow, look to Lockheed for leadership. From Hollywood, California, the men and women who build Lockheed Aircraft present America's Ceiling Unlimited, written by Harry Cronman and starring Joseph Cotton, with songs by Constance Moore and music by Wilbur Hatch, his orchestra and chorus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, by special arrangement with David O. Selznick, we bring you Joseph Cotton. Thank you. What are we Americans saying? What are we singing? What are we reading? What news are we making? Those are the questions we ask every Sunday at this time. And this week, this Christmas week, we ask them again because we think that in the answers you will find the very pulse of our nation beating powerfully to just one rhythm, Christmas. So first on our Christmas program we ask, what are we singing? The Song of the Week. Song of the Week is rising in chorus from every corner of the world, from the heart of an American private driving a jeep along the road to Rome, from the heart of his sweetheart in a war plant in Brooklyn, and here, too, straight from the heart of lovely Constance Moore. With Wilbur Hatch's orchestra and an augmented chorus, she sings it for you now. Connie Moore.
Thank you, Connie. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the rest of our program is rather unusual for us. It is at once the answer to all of our other questions. What are we saying, reading, and what news are we making? The event of the week. It's as old and venerable as Santa Claus. It's as young as the year about to be born. It's American, English, French, and Norwegian. In happier times, it was German, too. It's the event of the week, more than that, of the entire season. It's Christmas. It's Christmas again. Another Christmas for a world at war. The gentle carol can be scarcely heard. The bell tolls not for life, it seems, but death. The Christmas candle dims to nothing, to nothingness before this other flame. This conflagration that would spread and ravish all that man has built since time began. Christmas and war. Yes, they're strange companions. And thinking America, facing facts in the American way, might ask, was it for this a child was born in Bethlehem? I don't presume to know the answer. All I can do is tell you a story. Possibly you will find the answer there. story that is based on fact, on an actual letter which reached the outside world last spring by way of the underground. It belongs to the man who gave his life to write it, and through him, 
It belongs to all the world. For the world speaks a universal language these days. Great wings in the skies are dwarfing time and space. The world has been growing steadily smaller. Till now, when a man is whipped in the heart of Europe, his cries are heard in every decent home throughout the earth. The time is mid-December, 1942. The place is Yugoslavia. In a grim and desolate mountain region, a group of starved and frozen partisans have made their camp. It's late of the grayish winter afternoon. The wind is sharp. There's snow in the air. And yet no fire can be lighted against the cold, for German patrols are everywhere about the countryside. One of the ragged group seated with his friend a little distance from the others huddles deeper into his greatcoat. A little fire, that's all I ask. A little fire, is that so much? Uh, would you light a torch to lead the Nazis to us here? Let them come. I'd rather fight the Nazis than this wind. Listen to it. It'll be worse in the night. Well, it will be better in the spring. I will need more than spring. It'll take a lifetime to melt the marrow in my bones. War is not easy, Joseph. War is a thing... Did I ask for war? Did I ask to freeze and starve? Did I ask to see my crops destroyed, my father and my brother killed? Yes, you've given a great deal, Joseph. Why? Tell me that. Why? Will my land yield better crops? Will my cattle give more milk? Will I be warmer than I was? Why? Why do we creep through the hills like hunted animals without shelter, without comfort? Why do we suffer? Why do we fight? They've told us, Joseph, to leave a better world for our sons. Our sons. I could have had a son by now, this very moment. Draga and I might be watching him, listening to him laugh, holding him in my arms. Oh, Joseph, you must not embitter yourself. You must not think of Draga now. Two years. Two years we were, we were betrothed. Two years. That summer I counted every day, every hour almost. Draga and I would have been married at the harvest. But there was no harvest. No harvest now, only suffering and death. Joseph, perhaps it's not for me to say. I, I do not think that I'm wise beyond all other men, but sometimes in the night, when I cannot sleep for cold, sometimes I think these things too. Because it's true. <laughs> no, Joseph, no. I, I smile and I tell myself, this is not dead. This is life. This is the withered stubble in the field. The stubble that we turn and plow into the ground so that when spring is born again, the earth will have strength to nourish new life at her bosom. New life. There will be no new life. We die and rot here in this wilderness. And our names die with us. No, Joseph, there's something I've not told you. Maria's with child. You're Maria. The word has come to me from the village. Maria will have a child, perhaps to start the new year. Oh. Are you not happy for me? Oh, for you, not for the child. Joseph, a son. A son. And what will you give him? Tell me, a home burned to the ground, a ravaged farm, hunger, to be the companion of his youth and for his old age, poverty and despair. Oh, now, Joseph, there are some things that you do not wish to understand. I have a heritage for my son. Here, inside my tunic. I've written it down. If I should die, be Joseph... Be still, be still. One does not speak of dying when there is a child. I have no fear, Joseph. If I fall, would you... Wait, listen. Ah! Joseph, the sentry. A Nazi patrol. Now let them come, Peter. Now let them come and fight. It's no use, Joseph. He's badly hit. We'll have to leave him, I'm afraid. Leave him here? The Nazis know our position. That patrol will go back and bring more men. We must move out fast. But, but to leave him here, to die alone. But we must. Have the Nazis made such beasts of us that we forgot how to be men? Would you have the rest of us die for one who can't be saved? I'll carry myself. I'm strong enough. Oh, do no good, Joseph. He'll not last long. He's almost oh. gone already. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh. I think he tries to speak. Joseph. No, no, Peter. Hold your strength. No, please. While there's your time. No, no, you should not talk. Joseph, Joseph. Inside my tunic, it's a letter for my son. Yes, I know. His heritage. You, you will take it back. No, not I. You will take it to him, Peter. You will take it back yourself. No. I promise. I promise. 
does it? Yes. And have, have you noticed that the wind is dying? Peter. Peter. Good news, my child. I have brought you a doctor. A doctor? Ah, luxury, isn't it? By God's own grace, he was in the neighborhood with a group of partisans. He cannot stay long, Maria. You had better hurry. I... I will, Father. Good. Doctor, I leave her with you then? Yes, Father. Everything is in readiness. I must go out to the others. They all wait so anxiously. One would think no other child had ever been born. Father Miloš. How is she, Father? Draga, that is one question I can never answer. But is she a... Uh, I am both the man and the priest. How can I know what a woman feels when her time is upon her? <laughs> then it goes well. God is with her. Uh, still, Father, it pleases me that the doctor is there, too. Now, George, have I not told you myself? God does not disdain a little help from his servants on earth. Father, is he a skilled physician? Is he well trained in the work? Draga, if God accepts his qualifications, should not we be satisfied too? But, Father, she is so weak for lack of food. And, and this place is cold. It is her heart that is sick for loneliness. Come, come, Sophia. Must we torment ourselves with needless worries now? Have you forgotten? It is Christmas Eve. There is work to do if we would celebrate the Mass. The Mass? You would say it here? Where else? Is there another shelter for our prayers? In all the village, had they left us one other building with roof or wall? But, Father, to say the Mass here in this... in this... Draga, my child, there was another place like this. God's name was heard there, too. The first Christmas. As it says in the book, For this day is born to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, in the city of David. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of good will. Forgive me, Father. There is nothing to forgive. Come now, what say you? Will this box make 
a decent altar, Mrs. Sophia? Yes, Father, and I have a scarf for an altar piece. I have a bit of a candle that I've saved. And I have wine, uh, oh, uh, half a cup, perhaps. I knew I could depend on you, George. All else you might lose, uh, except your wine. I'll be the altar boy, Father, <laughs> and lead with the singing, too, huh? <laughs> be quiet. Be quiet. Listen. Someone outside. All of you, be still. Who is it? Who is there? Joseph. It's Joseph. 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 Are you a man or a ghost? Come in. Joseph. Joseph, you're back. Draga. You're back. Draga. If, if you only knew how many times I've dreamed of this. Oh, Joseph. To hold you in my arms again. <laughs> Draga. Draga. My son. Oh, Father. Father, forgive me. I forgot myself. What brings you, Joseph? You must know it's dangerous for you here. I come with news from Maria. Where is she? Where is Maria? She is in the other room. Her time is near. Joseph, do you bring news of Peter? Yes, Father. Good or bad? Oh, God rest his soul. Joseph, when was it? When did he die? Ten days ago. It was a long way. I could travel only in the night, but I had to come. I promised. I promised I would bring the letter back. A letter? Do you want to leave it with me, my son? Father, there is a difficulty. I... I do not have the letter. I destroyed it. Oh, I had to. I was almost taken once. But still, I brought it back. I brought it back in my mind. I learned it every word, every letter, just as he wrote them. Are you sure? Yes, Father. I will tell it to you now so you may write it down again. Joseph, now, before all the others? <laughs> there is nothing in it that they cannot hear. Very well, then. You may say it now. It was a letter, and at the top was written, To my unborn son. Oh. And then it said, My child... Sleeping now in the dark and gathering strength for the struggle of birth, I wish you well. At present, you have no proper shape and you do not breathe and you are blind. Yet when your time comes, your time and the time of your mother whom I love deeply, there will be something in you that will give you power to fight for air and light. Such is your heritage. Such is your destiny as a child born of woman to fight for light and to hold on without knowing why. Go on, my son. Yes, Father. May the flame that tempers the bright steel of your youth never die but burn always, so that when your work is done and your long day ended, you may still be like a watchman's fire at the end of a lonely road, loved and cherished for your gracious glow by all good wayfarers who need light in their darkness and warmth for their comfort. The spirit of wonder and adventure, the, the token of immortality, will be given to you as a child. And may you keep it forever. With that in your heart, which always seeks the pastures beyond the desert, the dawn beyond the sea, the light beyond the dark. May you seek always and strive always in good faith and high courage in this world where men grow so tired. Keep your capacity for faith and belief, but let your judgment watch what you believe. Keep your power to receive everything, only learn to select what your instinct tells you is right. Keep your love of life, but throw away your fear of death. Life must be loved or it is lost, but it should never be loved too well. Keep your delight in friendship, only learn to know your friends. Keep your intolerance, only save it for what your heart tells you is bad. Keep your wonder at great and noble things. The sunlight, the thunder, the rain and the stars, the wind and the sea, the growth of trees, the return of harvests, and the greatness of heroes. Keep your heart hungry for new knowledge. Keep your hatred of a lie and keep your power of indignation. Now, I know that I must die, and you must be born to stand upon the rubbish heap of my errors. Forgive me this. I am ashamed to leave you an untidy, uncomfortable world, but so it must be. In thought, as a last benediction, I kiss your forehead. Good night to you, and good morning, and a clear dawn. Father Milos, 
Yes, Doctor. A son is born. A son is born. That is the story, the eternal, unchanging story of Christmas. New life, new hope to an old and weary world. It is the story of every year, yes, and even this year. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. The light of peace does shine in this year of war, emblazoned on the hearts of every fighting man. Tomorrow, peace on earth. The men and women of Lockheed wish for every American that this be a joyous Christmas, too. For what greater joy has man than to cast off the shackles of his own selfishness and to work and fight with a singing heart for the greatness and good of all mankind? Therefore, may we hope that every man who loves freedom will celebrate this Christmas joyfully in the firm resolve to share our common task, to work, to fight, to march together to victory. Sincere thanks to our good friend of the Mercury Theater, Agnes Moorhead, who played the part of Draga, to Hans Conrad, Lou Merrill, Pedro de Cordova, and the rest of the cast who helped us tell our story. For them, and for the men and women of Lockheed, may I give you the first Christmas greeting of all. Peace on earth, and to all men of goodwill. This program was a presentation of the Lockheed Aircraft Corporation of Burbank, California. Patrick McGeehan speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.